Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. I'm your host, Kimir Baker, the CEO founder of J Intelligence Networks. That's J Intel. Our podcast is your go-to source for empowerment and holistic well-being. Each episode is dedicated to nurturing a positive mindset, offering strategies to heal and transform the whole person. Join us on this journey to find balance, resilience, and true inner peace. Welcome back to a Healing Peace Podcast. It's a treat to have you. We are officially in summer. Yes, we are in that vacation season. And boy, have we been feeling that heat. I know that certain states, it has been hot. And I mean hot. Before I jump into my wonderful PSAs, I want to know how you are doing. What vacation plans do you have coming up? How are you beating that heat wave and staying cool? Also, I just want to let you know that our podcast is available on Podchaser. And we've noticed that we have some people there listening to us on Podchaser. So I just want to acknowledge you guys and say thank you for joining our community and listening to us. Now, for our wonderful PSAs. Please rate our show and provide a positive feedback. Tell your family and friends about us. And I'm going to add this time, consider donating to our nonprofit, J Intelligent Networks. That's J Intel for short. No donation is too big or small. Your support will help fund this great podcast. So go ahead and throw a little something, something to decide for us to keep this show going. All right, now let's get back to the show. This is our tools and tips show where we gather the best information from our interviews. We want to provide tangible nuggets that you can apply to your everyday. Our interviews with Emilio, an overcomer and a nonprofit founder were incredible. He shared great information about overcoming, taken directly from his life experiences. You can go back and re-listen as many times as you want. But in the interim, let's go ahead and dive into our tools and tips. Emilio discussed in both interviews the power of writing. It can be a form of journaling or writing to others. I'm about to date myself. But I remember when we used to write letters and send postcards. Those were the days. Now we have all types of methods of communication. And this communication style is so that we can get information out much faster than when we started. But there's something about writing that provides clarity to our thoughts and emotions. And writing also connects us to other people. So. Here are some tips. This is our tip number one, and it's about journaling. So to get started with journaling, I want to say, remember that it may take time to gather your thoughts. So spend a couple of minutes beforehand picking a subject, picking a topic that you want to delve into, and just getting your thoughts together. There is no problem in reflecting and spending time. To tackle what's coming ahead in your writing time. There you go. How about to pace yourself when you're journaling? Do not journal for hours to the point of exhaustion or depletion. You can also be creative in your journaling. Feel free to doodle or add imagery. Remember, this is about you and it does not have to be structured. Use prompts or select a theme which I already said about picking a topic. But when you select that theme, just pick up words that are associated with that theme. It doesn't even have to be complete thoughts, but it could just be words that pop up when you think about that theme that you want to spend more time exploring. So that's tip number one. That is journaling. Want support and guidance on your personal growth and development? Then pick up our personal growth and development workbook authored by a Christian counselor and our J. Intel founder, Kimir Baker. 
The workbook provides a practical approach for emotional wellness by providing insights and prompts for journaling as well as prayer. This approach reveals the power of self-reflection and self-discovery while mending emotional wounds with the help of our Father. Pick up your 10 weeks of daily encouragement and practice transformation. Go to ahealingpeace.com forward slash store to purchase your copy. Moving on, Emilio indicated the value of reading to expand our minds. He highlighted the benefits of educating ourselves and learning from others. Therefore, tip number two is to find and read books about areas in which you want to grow. Reading for growth allows you to tackle your limitations and develop your character. So if you want to expand your career, go ahead and find books about leadership and resilience. There's plenty of things that people have been able to identify that we can learn from and grow and build our repertoire. So that's go ahead. That's tip number two. And that is reading and educating yourself. Now, I don't know if you remember the theme from last season's podcast. Well, I'm going to give you a little hint. It was a renewed mind. Why am I asking? Because Emilio identified the benefits of taking captive our thoughts. One method he described was to look forward to the future, knowing that it will be better than your current experiences. The reality is that your current situation is not the final outcome of your life. Thus, for this tip, spend time visualizing what you want your future to be. And that even includes what type of person do you want to hang out with? What relationships do you want to have? Do you want to think about an ideal mentor to help you through your career journey or a mentor to help you through just life little challenges? But spend time visualizing it. And once you have a visual, then write out several goals that will get you to that destination. Now, I'm going to expose myself again, and I'm going to say, previously, I did have a bad problem with anger. Mm, I was mad at the world. And I'm pretty sure this has been common because I've heard people talking about it before. But one area where my anger came out at was driving. Mm, that driving. Yeah, yeah. Even as I think about it, I'm like, oh. But anyways, to help me overcome my anger, I had to visualize myself being calm on the road. To remain calm when people did dumb stuff, uh huh. I made sure that I listened to gospel music and thought about my plans once I got to my destination. I had to fix my mind on a different outcome than being angry at traffic and those in traffic. Yes, I did. And doing that over time repeatedly really did help. It calmed me down. It relaxed me such that when people start doing some dumb stuff or if I was stuck in traffic for 30 minutes for no reason, I was able to keep my calm. Yes, I was. Mm hmm. All right. Now let's keep on going. Building upon tip number three of taking captive your thinking. Emilio shared about soothing your mind. We all need a time out. We give them to our kids. But sometimes as adults, we need those moments where we can have our own tranquility. Thus, Emilio discussed how relaxing, meditating, and yoga are methods to soothe our minds. For tip number four, pick one of these items and introduce them into your weekly routine. Okay, guess what? Tip number five is all about. Mm, I'm going to give you a moment. Mm, okay, okay, okay. I'm acting foolishly. But tip number five is just like how we're talking about renewing our minds. Well, it also goes with how we take care of our bodies. That's right. Exercising. Emilio discussed the importance of exercising. Yes, to overcome life stressors. 
That is stress. Yes, yes, yes. We need a release. And it comes through the form of exercising. I don't know where I would be if I didn't have the opportunity to lift them weights and, and do that uh, while I'm lifting. That does a lot. Or ride my bike. At the beginning of this month, my job became hectic. We all know the story it happens to the point that I was unable to exercise for two weeks. Once I finally rode my bike again, I proclaimed, I will never stop exercising like I needed it. And it felt so good while I was riding my bike. It was such a sense of relief and peace. Yes, exercise is part of shedding that past. How you may ask, it sheds stress and provide those good old endorphins. Yes, it does. All right now, so I'm not getting stuck on how I'll be riding my bike. Let's go ahead and move on to the next tip. And Emilio revealed that by finding joy in the little things lead to finding your purpose. You're like, huh? How does that work? Well, I'm going to tell you. When you can find joy, those items provide hope, which allows you to share this hope and joy with others. So for tip number six, Keep a gratitude journal. We talked about that a while back and it keeps coming up. It's important. Write down all the little things that provide you hope throughout the day. Before the day is over, share one item with someone around you. Allow your joy and hope to encourage and inspire the other person. The outcome of this action allows you to be purposefully impactful. Yes, purposefully impactful. All from just being able to keep a tally of the good things and the hope and the joy that comes your way despite those challenges. And yes, it takes an investigative mind to find these elements. Yes, it does. But the benefit of it is that it helps us to get through that stage, that hump, and to give us the opportunity to see goodness beyond our immediate situation. And not only that, you get to pull someone along with you in that joy and in that hope. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned that tip number six can be hard. Why can it be hard? Finding joy in tough situations is not the easiest thing to do. So what can you do when it's difficult finding joy in challenging situations? Okay, so in homage to tip number three of taking captive your thoughts, you can expand upon that tip by identifying how you can grow despite the difficult situations. Emilio made a drop the mic statement. He stated that there is always something divine that comes from the struggle. He also mentioned that by staying focused, reading, writing, and having open communication will help you to find divine light. Therefore, tip number seven is this to pray through difficult situations to take your thoughts captive. In your prayers, ask God to open your heart and mind and to allow you to grow. And while you're growing, drawing closer to him in the process, ask God what good things can come from your struggle and for you to embrace those items. So, Tip number seven is a great tip because you don't have to do all this extraneous work, all this huffing and puffing, trying to figure out, you know, what is life trying to teach you right now? But it's simply going to God and allowing him to open your heart and mind just by praying. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Sometimes tips can be easy. I find this to be an easy one. And for those who have challenges with praying, you don't know how to do it, 
It's just a conversation. Just start by just simply talking. And just in the midst of talking, being willing to take pauses every now and then, similar to a conversation you'll have with the person. As you're speaking with them, you pause every now and then to get feedback. But in your pause, you're giving God the opportunity to slow you down and to hear some of those good things that can come from your struggles. He loves to answer us, but all we got to do is go out and and seek him. Mm -hmm. Our 501c3 nonprofit organization, J Intel, and A Healing Peace are looking for community partners to support our mission. We are bridging the gap between faith-based and therapeutic resources. Consider partnering with us. Go to jintel.org slash donate and contribute. By contributing in this manner, you ensure that we continue to spread this inspiring and encouraging message. All right now, because I begin all killed away. Here we go. And which, honestly, as I'm talking, I feel like we're going through this pretty quick. So, yes, we are. But here we go. Keep going. Tip number eight builds upon tip number seven. And see, we're doing all this building, 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 building. Once God reveals the good and how you can grow, write them down. Write down what it reveals. I loved how Emilio identified that by writing them down, you will develop a roadmap to overcome future struggles. Therefore, tip number eight is to develop your roadmap for overcoming obstacles. And so many times, I don't know about you, but when I go through challenges, I get so happy that they're over with that I don't spend time reflecting and journaling through those experiences so I have insight how to overcome my next obstacle. So I'm just highlighting this little tip because it does wonders. And usually when you take that time to write it down, it also fills you with more confidence because you have the opportunity to identify things that work. And you're like, oh yeah, girl, I can be, oh yeah, I can thrive in this situation because Next time something like this happened, I know I could do X, Y, and Z. And if Z don't work out, I can start with A. Yes, you can. So go ahead. Write those wonderful insights down. Tip number nine builds upon tips six through eight. Yes, they do. And that is use your experiences and roadmap to help others through their experiences. Emilio exemplifies this tip because Using his experiences, he is now providing hope and education to the children of incarcerated parents. For you, find someone that you can share your experiences with to help them overcome their difficult situations or volunteer within your community. Yes, tip number nine, use those experiences to help others do their experiences. Yes, we can. We made it to tip number 10. Well, it's actually not a tip, but rather a tool for overcoming your past. Yes, because we were talking about overcoming the past and gaining that purpose. So for this tip, let me rephrase, I said it again. For this tool, I'm going to talk about, once again, our wonderful Living Free to Be Me program. We are actually wrapping up our spring session and it has been incredible. A recent participant noted that our program provides therapy through journaling. Mm-hmm. You know how sometimes you think about therapy and you're like, I don't want to do that. Or you think about, I can't afford that. Mm-hmm. But we have this program for you. Or even if you're like, I'm nervous, I haven't done it before. Ah, this is a great first step. Why? Because through that journaling, we work through some things. And another participant stated that the Living Free to Be Me program is a great opportunity to heal from emotional wounds. Structured journaling and reflection 
guide us to process negative experiences healthily. There is intentional emotional balance in the program that helps to free us, to help us from feeling overwhelmed by negative emotions. Because we are working through, we are removing that junk so that you are in your authentic self. And she continued to state that having components of purposeful positivity was something that she looked forward to. And we have another participant who was like, I don't know what I'm going to do now that we're not meeting because I've gotten so used to our times and I've enjoyed the community that we built. Yes, we are in that building community. It's so gratifying when you are in a group where people are working towards a goal of overcoming, letting go of those past wounds, and just being authentic with themselves. So yes, our program provides a structured framework so that we can address other issues that may come up because we are still in this world. That means we're still dealing with people. That means we're still going to have issues. But the things that we've developed gives you an opportunity to go forward and use this structured framework for other experiences that you have. And because of this participant taking our class, she said, I feel lighter, less angry, and happier. Now that's some great stuff right there. So I highly recommend anyone who's listening, who's still hanging on with me, to come and be a part of our healing journey and healing together. It's seven weeks, and we're going to have another session in the fall. So for those who didn't were able to make it this spring, come out. We have room. And just know this program allows you to heal from emotional wounds, step in a judgment-free zone and explore your experiences, manage your emotions, and dive into healthy self-care for mind, body, and spirit. Connect to your inner strength and embrace positivity. Elevate your relationships with deeper self-awareness. Develop a positive mindset. Discover how to let go of those negative emotions and live a more fulfilling life. And of course, embrace God as you confront unresolved emotions. We, ha- Like I said, we got another session coming up this fall. So start planning now to attend so that you are able to live free, the freedom that you were destined to have. All right now, because I'm just keep going just to jibber jabbing. But thank you for sticking around, listening to our tools and tips for overcoming the past and gaining purpose. As I always have stated, I'm going to say it again. Pick one or two items to work on. Once you achieve the growth that you desire, then go back and pick new items to implement. Until next time, I'm going to tell you. Enjoy your summer and go ahead and beat that heat wave. All right now, have a great week.